Hey everyone. First of all, I wanted to say thank you for all the positive feedback. I've gotten a bunch of really nice messages about the Barry Harris line I went through a few weeks ago. So today I decided to do another Barry Harris line, only this one, instead of over a minor chord, it's going to be over a dominant seventh chord. So as usual, let's just look through this line one note at a time. There are only four possible starting points for this line, the one, three, five, and seven. So if you start on the one, you're going to do this line going down two half steps. If you start on the three, five, or seven, you're going to go up four notes of an arpeggio. So beginning on the third, A, you would go up three, five, seven, nine. If you start on the fifth, or C, you would go up five, seven, nine, eleven. Now, I'll just point out that you don't usually sustain the natural 11th or that B flat when you're playing over a dominant 7th chord. So just bear with me and play that 11th, that B flat, and we'll find out why it works so well in a minute. And finally, if you start on the flat 7, you will go up this arpeggio 7, 9, 11, 13. So now, make sure that you have these four small lines really down. Make sure that you can play those just as easily as you can play one, three, five, seven. And now, this is where it gets really interesting. Instead of just playing these four lines arbitrarily, you can connect all of them with downward stepwise motion. So in this first example, it just naturally happens. You're moving down, F to E, E to E flat, and that E flat can actually become the first note of the next line. Here, I'll just point out that because the line starting on one ended on a low E flat, you'll wanna take this next line starting on seven down an octave, also starting on that low E flat. And the same goes for every time we're gonna connect these starting now. You can change it to any octave to make smooth voice leading. So from here, since the line ends on a D, we can continue with downward stepwise motion, going down a step to C, and go into that small line that begins on the fifth, or C. Now from that last note, the B flat, we can once again do downward stepwise motion to A, and go through the line that begins on A, the third. And finally, from that last note, the G, if we go in downward stepwise motion, we get back to F, right back where we started. I'm going to play that one more time, but actually show you what it looks like in the octave that I'm playing. As you might have guessed, this pattern could theoretically continue forever. From the E flat, we could go up higher and higher, but unfortunately, on most instruments, we're going to run out of range eventually. So, for this case, Barry Harris actually has something that he calls a pivot. PIVOT! <laughs> which basically means you'll be playing the same notes, but one of them will jump down an octave, or pivot down an octave. PIVOT! <laughs> PIVOT! Shut up! Just to hear what that sounds like, here's the original version where E-flat goes up to G, and here's this next version where E-flat goes down to G. So now check it out. On the top is the line that I just played a second ago, and on the bottom are the exact same notes, but with pivots allowing them to move down the range of your instrument instead of up. As I just played, the E flat, instead of going up to G, will go down to G here. The exact same way, C, instead of going up to E flat, will go down to E flat. And then the last pivot, the A, instead of going up to C, will go down to C. It's pretty amazing to me just how different these two lines sound. They're the exact same notes, but just changing a few intervals from an ascending third to a descending sixth, it almost sounds like a different line to me. I'm going to play these two back to back, and let me know if they sound as different to your ears as they do to mine. As you may have guessed, once again, just like the top line could go up forever, theoretically, 
this bottom line could go down forever. Okay, I, I don't think it's gonna pivot anymore. You think? Once you get this line really comfortable, I created a challenge for you. This challenge is basically taking the line through the entire circle of fifths by alternating starting on the seventh and the third. So say you start on F7 on the seventh. Now I just add a half step into the third of B flat seven. And now another half step into the seventh of E flat seven. And you see the pattern, it just alternates third, seven, third, seventh throughout the entire cycle of fifths. I don't think I have it quite fast enough to play it in one breath, but I'm sure someone out there on YouTube can do it. Anyways, here's the challenge. Halfway. So that's everything I got for this line. Please let me know what you think. And if you end up going through this challenge, send me a recording. I'm always happy to listen to it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.